I would like to dedicate this lecture to the memory of Baki Fuller. Amen. I knew that he was very fond of spherical uh, polyhedra. For me, the, he was in the end of a chain of very remarkable people from the time of the Pythagoreans, Euclid, and uh, Kepler, uh, Descartes, and so on. So when I picked up a topic for my research in morphology, it was sponge structures and hyperbolic surfaces and subdivisions between lattices in space. And so in 66, I sent him my PhD work and uh, he embraced it and complimented me, and it was very important for me at that time. In 1976, he was invited by Frey Otto to a conference in Stuttgart, to which I was invited to, and he told me, Michael, come to my hotel, I want to discuss your polyhedra, because two years earlier, in 74, I published together with other two colleagues a book called Infinite Polyhedra. Bucky didn't like the term infinite. And he told me, Michael, what's infinite? What's infinity? Have you been there? Uh, everything on this globe is finite. I told him that the imagination can soar to infinity. And he agreed. And he knew already with my preoccupation with trying to resolve and to solve a theoretical roof which takes care of finite, spherical, and also infinite, hyperbolic, and toroidal surfaces under one roof. He thought it's something nearly impossible. And he was very critical of it not very critical, but hesitant, but he wished me good luck. <laughs> but I was a bit discouraged at that time, and so since that year I was elected dean of my faculty, I let it slip for another decade or more, and only in 95, in Alexandria, Washington, in a conference of ISIS, I presented the idea and Yuval Neyman and Danny Shechman came to me and told me, Michael, you are going to sit and to write a book, and it appeared a year later with the same name, The Periodic Table of the Polyhedral Universe. How many polyhedra there are? I say that we have infinite number of different surfaces. Only one is the spherical, the rest are kind of toroidal or sponge-like. On each of them, you can draw infinite number of polyhedra. And so, the number of possible polyhedra is infinite times infinite, which is incredible. And to try to bring them under one roof, to perceive them as a whole is really an ambitious task. But I felt it's possible. So uh, I'll make a quick run over the various possible polyhedra. Here are several polyhedra which featured in my PhD work as one of the little chapters. Next. And these are the services. In fact, this is the Fermi surface. Uh, along which the electrons have made their galop, uh, exchanging uh, atoms and so on. And uh, this is a surface subdividing space between two uh, cubic lattices. Next. And uh, next. Neil, you will have to work quite hard. 
and uh, so these are some of the possible maps you can draw on these surfaces to generate what I call infinite polyhedra. In fact, today I came to agree with Bucky, it's better to call them sponge structures and not infinite polyhedra, but uh, that's a, a slight improvement. Next. And so this is the cover of the book, show also the uh, lettering. Yeah. The letters. Yeah. yeah. Infinite Polyhedra by Bachmann, Burke, Kleinman. And uh, we uh, showed there something like more than 100 cases of really regular one vertex uh, polyhedra uh, types. Next. And you can see some of, the, of these infinite polyhedra in their relation to actual sponge structures in nature. This is a speck of a seashell, a crushed seashell, uh, enlarged maybe 50,000 times or more. Next. These are also polyhedra. I call them floral polyhedra. Again, their number is infinite. Some of them, we meet them in the nature under various disguises. For instance, 